Welcome back. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make your actual prototypes responsive. Now, if you remember, in our previous video, we made quite a few things uh, with this learning base, a uh, green job prototype. But as you can see, it's static. It's it, it does have sticky header, it does some sort of animations. If we resize, however, it is just desktop first, meaning if you preview on a mobile device, it would just shrink it or cut it off and you know you can't really test it on that. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to make a prototype responsive using extra adaptive views. And to start off with, as you can see, I created a demo for a secondary page to just show you how it's done. For each of the pages you want to make responsive, you would want to go to Style tab if nothing is selected and just click on Add Adaptive Views. Now, as you can see, I have Desktop Adaptive View already created, so I can just select that or I could just create a new Adaptive View and just name it whatever. I named it Desktop by default. And as you can see, the one which is in kind of like a teal color is the one which is active right now. And if let's say I would want to edit adaptive views, so let's say create a children of this view, I would then go by clicking edit adaptive views and then adding a new view. Um, you could either go, let's say, and design your responsive sites from the biggest example to the lowest or go mobile first and first design mobile and then increase the size and make adaptive views as you go. I would go down below, um, not mobile first, but desktop first and then adapt it to mobile and just because we already have a design for desktop. So I would just add new views and use presets or I can define, you know, custom sort of breakpoints if I want to, but presets is just easy. So let's go ahead and create, let's say one for a landscape tablet and one more for mobile. So we cover the basics. Of course, naturally you might want to have more, many more breakpoints, especially when you have so many different tablets and devices which are, you know, like custom, but let's create like an iPhone X, let's say. So we cover desktop which is a big screen, we have a middle screen for let's say a tablet and then we have an iPhone X for a mobile device. And this is basically it. Now as you can see, we can see exactly the children in yellow. We can see exactly which ones are going to be adapted, what changes are going to appear in every, every, every view. But at the basic level, you would just want to go in tabs one by one and then make changes. And just to show you exactly what I mean, if I zoom out at the desktop view, you're gonna notice that all of the artboard is filled into the fullest. Now, if I go to tablet view, it automatically resizes it width wise to the tablet dimensions. And I can just start moving all the elements as they should appear. So let's say to a center and maybe even resize this image to that maybe even make it a bit smaller, you know, so we don't waste so so much real estate. And and maybe even make the text a little bit smaller as well. Um, the headline a bit smaller. So all of it is kind of responsively adapts to our requirements of a new medium. In this specific case, I'm just going to delete all those options and maybe just add a mobile icon that, hey, it's a mobile menu. I'm going to use just an icon for that for now. Drag and drop. Again, cosmetics don't really matter at this point of uh, prototype. So you might want to just jig it and spend a bit more time. But let's see, this is how our menu is going to look like on a tablet. And every other element on the page is just going to adapt as much as let me just push those elements without spending too much time and lastly the footer like this let's say a bit of a spaced out text and push it a little bit upwards like that and if I preview it automatically it's gonna open um, the desktop one as you can see you if it's adaptive view enabled you're gonna have choice to go through different options and just see exactly how it is. So as you can see desktop, landscape and the mobile which we haven't addressed is just a smaller version of a desktop. The good thing about this, if we go back to default, is that if a user, let's say, opens our prototype on a smaller device than desktop, 
they automatically are gonna see let's say the tablet version like this so imagine that I opened it on a tablet it automatically adapted all the content I wanted and if I would open it on a mobile it would look like this so now I can just go and update, let's say my iPhone X and resize everything else there as well. And just copy in the last bit, which is let's say the menu icon from tablet view. And by no means this is perfect, um, but at least it adapts. Now if I test it out, as you can see from even this actual view, we have desktop view, landscape view, and iPhone X view on a mobile device. And all of them are adapting the same content from the desktop. And if let's say the user has a smaller device or even smaller device, they see different views. So that's the basics of um, the responsive design, as you can see, our behavior is exactly the same as it used to be. If you have the affect all views enabled as a checkbox, as you can see, it highlights in green other views you have created. And let's say if I would do something new to a prototype, it's gonna be affected on the different type of views. So in that case, you can add like almost like a master if you want, and it's gonna be affected throughout the views and you can make it responsive about making copies to a prototype and just uncheck when you don't want to affect it all views. And these are the basics of adaptive views. There is a bit more to it, but I would allow you to just experiment a little bit and see what you can do with it. But it's how basically you can make your prototypes as responsive as you want to be. In reality, you might not need to do that, uh, but just in case your users access the prototype on a mobile device instead of, let's say, desktop, it's a good way to assure that it actually works. So I hope you found this video helpful. If so, leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe to this channel, I really appreciate it. And as always, stay tuned for more material from Action Noob to Master Series. See you next time.